Having covered one member of the Sith Triumvirate previously, it is only right we move to the second of the three members before tackling the person who started it all. Today, we discuss the one Sith Lord of the three that followed somewhat traditional beliefs in the Sith way, with an inability to die and a body fractured into millions of pieces, the walking epitome of pain itself. In this Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic lore video, we discuss the story of Darth Sion, the Lord of Pain. Not much is known about Darth Sion's early life. The earliest life events we know about the Lord of Pain is during the Great Sith War. Exar Kun, a fallen Jedi, waged war on the galaxy, and Darth Sion was under his command. During his time in warfare, Sion noticed something peculiar. Not once in his long and arduous combat career in the Great Sith War was he defeated nor struck down. He gained wounds, sure, but he gained somewhat of a tolerance to the what would be monumental amounts of pain he was in. The Sith Marauder claimed himself immortal, unable to be killed in combat. That was until a fateful day. During a battle, Darth Sion was struck down by an opponent who used a critical blow to kill him. However, this wasn't the end for Sion. Using the enormous amounts of pain he was in, his anger and his hatred that the Sith had taught him to embrace, Darth Sion rose from the dead. His opponent, presumably in awe and horror of what they had just witnessed, was soon struck down by Sion in their shock. While a bizarre turn of events, this proved something to the Sith Lord. He was right. The Lord of Pain was immortal. While Darth Sion was triumphant, Exar Kun and the Sith Armada were not. With Exar Kun and the Sith defeated, it left Darth Sion without purpose, until a promising, ambitious, and rebellious Jedi would fall to the dark side alongside his apprentice. With Darth Revan and Darth Malak appearing in the galaxy with a large arsenal of ships and soldiers at their disposal, Sion saw this as an opportunity. He would once again find purpose in his servitude to the Sith Empire, fighting battle after battle and coming out with more than just a few scratches, but still standing nonetheless. Much like Exar Kun beforehand, however, Darth Revan's empire would also fall, with Revan turning back to the light side of the Force after being betrayed by Darth Malak and defeating his former apprentice in combat the empire that Revan started would fizzle away. Darth Sion watched from the Sith Academy on Korriban as Revan's empire fell. He once idolized Revan due to his powerful connection to the dark side of the Force, and seeing Revan return to the ways of the Jedi disappointed Sion, to put it lightly. Soon enough, Sion discovered the woman that had found Darth Nihilus on what remained of Malachor V, the Sith Lord Darth Treya. He would join her and Darth Nihilus in the Sith Triumvirate, whose goals were to eliminate the Jedi and restore the Sith. During his time as a disciple of Darth Treya, both Nihilus and Sion grew sick and tired of their teachings. They stripped her of the Force and beat her to a pulp, exiling the woman from the Sith Triumvirate. Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion, after exiling their master, then formed an alliance with the Triumvirate's original goals in mind. While Darth Nihilus would consume all that got in his way in known space, Sion would utilize the Sith Assassin organization on Malachor V to assimilate the Jedi on a successful warpath. The Sith Assassins were first organized by Darth Revan, and after the fall of Malak's empire, soon found themselves under the command of the Sith Triumvirate. During Nihilus and Sion's devastation of the Jedi Order, another former Jedi named Atrus, who kept the facade of a Jedi, slowly leaked information about the supposed last Jedi in the galaxy. Her name was Mitra Surik, a general who, before Revan's fall to the dark side along with those who followed him, served in the Revan Chist movement. Sion became fascinated with her, researching her history and the battles she had fought, as well as where she was hiding. Sion stealthily had his warship full of Sith assassins played dead so the ship Mitra was scheduled to have transport on, a Republic ship known as the Harbinger, may attach themselves to recover possible scrap. When all of Sion's crew were on board, they sneakily took out most of the crew before Sion reawoke and announced that he had come for Mitra. Sion was not the only one in pursuit of Mitra Surik, however, as Darth Treya, who had previously been exiled from the Sith Triumvirate, also located Mitra using Revan's old ship, the Ebon Hawk. Sion learned this and opened fire upon the ship, but not before it could get away with Mitra on board. The Ebon Hawk, stalked by the now infiltrated Harbinger, took refuge on the mining world of Paragus II. During their time looking for a way off the station, they boarded the Harbinger not realizing it had been taken over. On board, they were confronted by Darth Sion, 
in which Darth Freya then sacrificed herself to save the others from his wrath. Thankfully, all she lost was a hand, and she managed to rejoin the group as the Ebon Hawk fled the station. During the escape from Paragus II, the delicate asteroids were detonated by Cyan's careless attempt to attack the ship, destroying the entire facility and economically shattering the galaxy. Cyan managed to survive this event and continue his pursuit of the Jedi exile. The next time Cyan would come to meet Mirasuric was on the Sith world of Korriban, in which he warned her of Darth Treya, vowing to destroy everything the Lord of Betrayal held dear, including the exile. When the exile fled, Having been warned by Darth Treya that this was not a battle she could win due to the Lord of Pain's inability to die, Cyan let her go, puzzlingly. It was throughout his research on her and his violent pursuit of the exile that he grew to respect her, to even love her. After Treya's betrayal of Mitra on Dantooine and the murder of the three remaining Jedi Masters, Treya and Cyan travel back to Malachor V to the Treya's Academy, the home of the Sith Assassins. With Darth Nihilus out of the picture, only two of the Triumvirate remained. Little did Cyan know that this would be his time to finally let go of the pain he felt. Mitra Surik eventually arrived on the grounds of the Academy and faced off with Darth Cyan for what would be the final time. The Jedi Exile struck the Lord of Pain down again and again, but with the power of the Dark Side, he rose again each time. With a wise use of words during breaks in the combat and an understanding of how Darth Treya operated, Mitra coerced Darth Sion into finally letting go and being at peace, leaving his life of dependency on the Force to keep him alive so he may die unlike the countless times he had survived. The long tale of Darth Sion's bloody and unbeatable history was finally put to an end. Thank you for watching today's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic video. I hope you enjoyed learning the story of Darth Sion, the Lord of Pain. If you enjoyed this video and want more Star Wars, Fallout, or Halo content, be sure to subscribe, like, and share with your friends. I'd like to thank the Wanderers supporters of the channel for pledging a small fee every month for bonus content and perks. Cypriot Fox, Bonk, Lovable Douchebag, Splicer87, The Useless Show, and Studog. Your continued support is greatly appreciated, my friends. If you want a shout out at the end of each of my videos, as well as access to editing live streams, sneak peeks, and early access to the final product, consider becoming a Wanderous supporter today by clicking my join button for £1 a month. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you, always.